Today we'll be completing a machine from Hack the Box called Steam Cloud. And as you can see, I already started the machine. On, it's on 10, 10, 11, 133. This is a retired machine. And here I have my Kali Linux machine. You can run my Nmap, minus S3, minus SC. And as always, I have my intrusion detection system working here in Security Onion. Here's my IDS. All right, so we can see right away uh, it is scanned suspicious inbound. There will be more in a little bit, but for now, let's drill down into this. What is being detected by just running Nmap? What can we find? See that we are running Nmap here, and we saw that we are scanning for SQL ports. Nothing interesting there. Let's see if we can get the rest of the alerts. Here's another one, VNC. So this will continue to go on until the Nmap is done. I already did an Nmap scan for us, a top 1000 ports. We notice that we have port 22 here. Uh, we have port 8443, which from the look of things, we are running Minikube, which is Kubernetes. So 8443, this brings us to a document on how to enumerate Kubernetes. This is a step-by-step -step document, which I think is really great. It will teach you what Kubernetes is and how we can attack it. But in this case, we will just follow the same methodology, except for the open source one. First, we'll try to find out if we have any remote code execution. You see if we can steal the token and also access the API. Yeah, we'll be following this steps from here. Also, another one is from this site here. So if you want to install kubectl here, because we are attacking Kubernetes, we need to run this command here. So the wget command, and this will install Kubernetes, a uh, kubectl, which is a tool that we need. All right, check the alerts quick in the last 10 minutes. So all this noise here was generated by Nmap. But since we are attacking Kubernetes, we use this document here to see if we can uh, find some things. And Hectrix also has another one. So if we go to Hectrix, K8 uh, pen testing here. This is another guide. So it will teach us the basics, how we can enumerate, en enumerate. So this one. Okay, so we usually have these ports here. Since I did a top 1000 ports, I only got 8443. And I know for a fact that some of these ports are open. For example, uh, the Kubelet one or this one. We should be able to access that as well. But let's visit 8443 in our machine. Okay, that didn't work. The other port, 10250. And we need to make sure that we specify HTTPS here. All right, advanced. Accept the risk. Okay, since this is thinking about it and I am accepting a risk, let's see if we can uh, run a command from the command line from here. From here, we can run this command here. Notice that we need to have JQ installed, but we can run this here to see if we can find running pods on 10250. So let's use that. So here, curl SK HTTPS 133 running pods, pipe it to JQ so that it looks nice. See which pods are running. And right away, we get uh, this two will not be there, but Nginx is running, which is the default one for Kubernetes. So we need to make sure that we check that for any vulnerabilities. Most of the time, if you see a default container like Nginx, we're looking for RCE, which if we follow our documentation, we can try to find uh, how to run RCE. Okay, so the command to find RCE is kubectl server, the IP address, scan for RCE. Let's see what we find here. Let's see if any of the pods here will actually have a remote code execution. And I'm suspecting the Nginx, the default one. Another interesting um, part here is the proxy one. Notice that we have kubeproxy G8V GV8. We can try to get into that one as well. See if we can steal uh, the credentials. Uh, this proxy is proxying Nginx, so we might as well try the Nginx one. Okay, so coming back here, as you can see, the ones with RCE are the proxy and also the Nginx container. To test, to make sure that we have um, RCE, we can use kubectl and we can go back to our documentation here, see if we can find the, um, the syntax. 
hey, kubectl, let's go to the server and exec execute a command like id, a simple command on nginx powered nginx container. Let's see if we can just uh, get that to work. Yes. Now, we, since the container works, we can run that, com that, that command or we can just say, uh, what if I just do bash? Okay, so bash works as you can see I'm in. Uh, it just takes a little while. So ls, okay. Let's go to cd root, ls, okay, to user.txt, I guess. This is the user flag. Grab it and give it to hack the box. So user flag was super easy to get. Now we need to find out, uh, what, can we find the certificates in here and also the authentication key? And for that, we need to go to, I think it's this path here, var run secrets kubernetes.io service account. And in here, uh, ca.crt. So we notice that ca.crt is here. We need that one and also get token. And here's our token. So we need to save this token. Now that is done, ca.cert here, and the token I saved it in a file uh, called token. Okay. So token is going to be equals to that token. MA, okay. Make sure that our token is saved. So here's the token saved in memory so we have the token we have the certificate okay so with a token and a certificate what we can do is we can generate our own pod and in this case i asked chat gpt to give me a pod.yaml file and it's i will change these names at nginx pod nginx nginx uh, this one will mount the main file system of the actual root system that's running these pods and that's where it's going to mount it so i'm using this to deploy my own that actually just mounts the file system. Very simple. And using this as a template, come back here. Let's open pods. So I saved that as pod.yaml. Pod.yaml. And in this case, let's name this pod IT Security Lab 3. And I'll go through the steps here. The decision to use Nginx 1.4 142 um this was because this is already on the system so this image is already on the system we don't know if we can download from the internet so we keep this one there and this is just going to mount uh the root of the main system in slash root of my pod and if this goes well i should end up with a pod called it security lab 3 so now it's just a matter of deploying a pod using uh kubectl uh with my key and my uh, certificate. And so in order for us to do that, we use kubectl. Uh, token is going to be the one that I saved. And uh, then certificate is going to be the certificate in this file. The server, I'll give it the full path on 8443 this time, because that's how uh, deployment would go. Then I would uh, I like to apply a file called pod.yaml, which will deploy my own pod, which will mount the file system. So if everything goes well, this should create. Okay, so... Um, Looks like it didn't work. Let's try it again. And it's created, so I don't know why I have to do it a couple of times. We can check to see if this pod is already running, or we can just come here and see if we can connect to it in the same way that we did earlier. So in this case, I would like to connect to a T-Security Lab 3 if it's running. And if it's running, we should have a mounted file system in there as well. So let's see, using kubectl. If we want, we can run the, rerun this command here to see if his uh, IT security lab 3 is there. But for now, let's see. So it looks like it's, it's hanging. Let's try it one more time. All right, so I don't know why I have to do things uh, a couple of times, but since I mounted mine, uh, my file system inside of root, I uh, should have another root here. Uh, so cd root ls, and you will notice that inside of root, we have root. This is the root of the actual file system. 
now I should be able to see the final flag. All right, so the attack process, once you have it down, it's very simple and straightforward, but uh, you need to understand how Kubernetes work and also the attack methodology, especially the one about stealing passwords from RCE, from, uh, cube, uh, from the cubes. So that was what we did there. Let me check. I don't think Secure Onion is going to have a lot of things, but I was just checking for 843 here. Okay, I was checking for 8443. Uh, of course, all the attacks are there. Can I see kubectl? I doubt it because uh, there was encryption. Let's see if we can see kubectl. Nothing. All right, so this was uh, our attack on a machine called Steam Cloud. Very easy and straightforward. Please go ahead and read this document here, which I'll link in the description, and also the methodology from Hectrix. Otherwise, I hope to see you next time.